oh, it was tremendous. I mean, what do you expect? They have Legos literally everywhere. So you can't take a step with it. I, I did buy some things. So, you know, that's I'm, I'm looking forward to, to putting that stuff together. I'm I'm ex I'm exhausted, but you know, but we're back. So we're going to get going. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and today I'm going to be taking you through an awesome tool called Deploy Intune. It was created by Andrew Taylor. If you haven't seen uh, the podcast where we had him on, uh, you should be watching that. I don't know what you've been doing. Um, and I'm going to take you through this tool. It's a great way to get started with uh, with Intune. How much did I spend on Legos? Um, that's, uh, that's I, I share a lot, but that's where I draw the line. Get Rubik's, solving for the modern workplace. Okay, so a question I get asked all the time is how do I get started with Intune? I don't think meaning like, oh, how do I learn about it? I think it's like, where do you actually start building a tenant? So I have a tenant here. Um, I have two users in it, but that's about it. Let me show you what I got here. I got, um, if I go to devices here, um, I have no devices, right? I don't have any... Um, I don't have any configuration profiles. I don't have any uh, update rings. I don't have any conditional, you know, conditional access policies or compliance policies. Maybe the default. Yeah, they give you some default ones here for iOS. But like, I, I think uh, the, the bottom line is, you know, how, how do you get started? How do you know what to do first? And obviously you should, you know, definitely work with a partner to get this stuff going. But what if you just wanna, you know, test some devices and give yourself a baseline to start? So, you know, you know, I had Andrew Taylor on the podcast last week and he developed a tool called Deploy Intune. And we talked about this a little bit. I think it's phenomenal. And I'd really like to take you through how it works um, because this gives you just that. It gives you best practice uh, policy, right? It gives you uh, recommended settings. It gives you kind of a landing zone of what you should have. And this is just tremendous, right? So let me take you through it. Um, I've used it a few times, but I don't think folks really understand how uh, how easy it is, right? So basically what you do is you sign up here somewhere. Um, yeah, you go through, you sign up for the tool or whatever. And uh, essentially, once you get it, you get a link, um, uh, basically a link to click on. So let me be right back. I'm going to check my email for that link and we'll go from there. Okay, so I have clicked on this link and I was asked to sign into this tenant. And basically it's gonna start by setting up an app registration. Now you're gonna wanna be um, a GA um, to go through here because obviously there's a lot of permissions which it needs to set up the tenant for you. It's the equivalent of having a, you know, you would need a permission resource to do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit accept. But this is nice because I don't have to create an app reg and assign permissions myself. So here we go. Um, after clicking next, you will be taken to a form to set up your Intune tenant. So this kind of just walks you through it, right? You can give an image to use as, uh, so here, let's kind of go through it, right? Uh, the first field, it wants my company name, right? And that's gonna add a key on the device. Uh, then I add the email address of the tenant, right? Um, then what I do is I give a homepage field. I give a uh, company size. I give, this is really cool. You give an image that's gonna act as your desktop background, right? On all your Windows devices. You can change it later, obviously. And you can toggle um, the option to do conditional access policies or not. Because in some cases, the, you know, these are always shared with other elements. So you might not just want them in Intune. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's do it. I'm gonna hit next. Okay, my company name is Traditional Corp. And I know Traditional Corp. Actually, let's do this. Let's do, um, yeah. My homepage is going to be one of my favorite blogs. What is the file I want to use? Well, let's see what we got here. Let's use... Okay, that's fine. We'll use a Get Rubik's logo. And I'm going to say, yeah, Deploy Conditional Access. So here's the deal. I want to make this part very, very clear. That was it. 
<laughs> it was literally it. I answered a few questions um, about my company, uh, gave it my wallpaper, a few settings, and I'm going to have an in-tune landing zone in less than 20 minutes. So, I mean, you know, I, I don't, do I have to say anything else regarding the simplicity of this? All right, while we're waiting for that, I kind of want to show you what happened here on the back end a little bit. I'm going to sign into my traditional corp um, entry tenant, and we're going to go to applications and enterprise applications. Okay, and we can see here the eucToolbox.com is the app registration. So if we look at this, we can take a look at some things. We can see... Okay, we can see the home page. That's my app ID, right? Um, we can see the permissions. So if you want to see the permissions, it was uh, granted. Um, some are delegated, some are app permissions, but this is everything that it's set up for us. So, you know, we've talked in the past about app registrations, and this one was created for us by the app. Um, so now it's going through and it's going to use these to build our tenant for us. All right, so I walked away, got some coffee, took a phone call, did some stuff, right? Came back, forgot it was running, and then just, we're gonna log into the tenant here. All right, so same tenant from before, the traditional corp. I'm gonna go to Windows, because that's what I'm interested in, configuration profiles. Boom, whoa, let's take a look here. Um, the additional security, so. Okay, everything is clearly marked, which is nice. So ID is the prefix for Intune Deploy, I'm assuming. Additional security, block window store. Let's take a look at these. So if I go to additional security, let's see what I have here. So if I go to configuration settings, look at all this. I have administrative templates, above lock. So I have all these, you know, recommended policy settings, which are best practices. All right, this is perfect. I have a custom start layout with the XML. And remember, I could change all these if I want, but at least it's somewhere I can start and see these things right here. Um, I also have, let's take a look here. I have one for Windows 11, which is cool. I have a, I have a, a, a WDAC policy for app control, which is awesome. So really good stuff here. Um, but let's keep going, right? Cause that's just the configuration policies. When I go to scripts and remediations, I have some platform scripts. I have a device config script. I have remove bloatware. I have a backup script, right? That's probably for another day where we talk about the Intune backup tool. Um, but I have just some other things that are probably best set with scripts as opposed to policy, right? So that's really great. Um, when we take a look here, I have uh, some remediation stuff that I can deploy, right? I can remediate the store icon. Let's take a look at what that does. I feel like I just walked into a, a store on Christmas, right? Um, let's take a look at what that's doing. So that is, these are the count. Okay, this is basically looking for the start, if the app store is pinned and if it is, unpin it. Um, so that's good because a lot of folks ask for that. So that takes care of it. Moving on to updates for Windows, right? And we did a video where we talked about how important the update rings are. This is exactly what we talked about. In fact, uh, it matches up pretty good because we did it from the cookbook, but here you go, right? So this is the, you have all your pilot, you have all your rings, your pilot, your broad, your preview ring, all set the way they should be, right? The preview one is here and let's take a look. It's set to the insider release. If I go back to broad ring, that's gonna be the retail copy. Yep, general availability channel. It's got all the deferrals where they should be, it's perfect. Okay, let's back up for a second. Let's look at some other platforms. I have, uh, so for iOS, I have, I have some configuration profiles for iOS, right? I have baseline device restrictions. I have a restriction to block game center. Uh, I have a baseline features policy. That's gonna give me a lock screen message, single sign on settings. So everything I need here, um, if I go back to Android, let's see if I have anything for Android. If I do configuration policies, I have a base Android config policy, that's perfect. So all my you know default settings, things I wanna block, system security, some experience features. So it's got me covered. It even has Mac OS stuff. So it's, I got the default features. I have the protection policy, the restrictions. 
Um, let's kind of just peer into this and see what's in here. So yeah, I mean, this is like having a baseline for all the platforms as opposed to just Windows. So this is awesome. You, you can enroll, you know, everything and test it in here, which is so cool. Um, I want to switch gears for a second and just take a look at a few other things, right? So I did have some groups created for me as well. So if I go through here, you can see I have all these Intune Pilot users, Preview users. So these all kind of should tie up to the uh, to the update stuff. So for example, my Intune VIP users, I could put users in that group. And then when I go back to that policy, the VIP channel, this should already be assigned to, let's see here. Yeah, it's already assigned to that group for me. So creating the policy and it's been assigned appropriately is perfect. So it's not gonna mess with anything in production. It kind of stays in its own little bubble, which is really nice. I'm gonna shift to endpoint security for a minute. And we're gonna look at uh, some things that were set here. So we have some things in the antivirus area, right? I have uh, Defender for Endpoint being active. I have a global exclusions. BitLocker policy is enabled. I have a default uh, firewall policy. When I go to attack surface reduction, I have some basic uh, security things here. I have my surface reduction rules. I have some device control. I have a, def a baseline lapse policy already set up. Man, they got lapse too. I mean, this is, I mean, this is everything. This is like, all right, if I shift gears to conditional access, right? I didn't really have anything before except the base one. Here is all my uh, conditional uh, access policy that it's set up. So require multi-factor authentication for all users. This goes beyond Intune too. This is best practice for a tenant and it's all off by default. So you're not gonna disrupt any business. And I would recommend putting it in report only mode before you start, but this is all here. So you can kind of use these to, as a baseline or, you know, do some customization as you go, but you know, they've been configured here, block anything not protected. So if we wanna kind of look in here, you have, something targeting all users. We exclude the break glass account, which it created for me. We're targeting all cloud apps, not excluding anything. We have two conditions that must be met. We have the included platforms, except Windows. Um, we have three grant controls required to be compliant, require hybrid join or require app protection. So this is great right here. This is, uh, again, a best practice. I'm gonna shift to apps for a second. I'm gonna go all apps um, and kind of take a look at what I have here. I have Microsoft Project Invisio, which is really nice because when you're deploying the M365 apps and, and you know you only want to deploy Project Invisio to certain groups, I believe the groups were created as well. So if I go to properties um, and go down to assignments, so look at this. I have required for a group called Project Install, which was created and an uninstall required for project uninstall. So I can just shift users in and out of that if I wanna put this here or take it out. So just just an awesome uh, setup here. Uh, some other things that were set up, right? I have a few iOS and Android apps, company portal is already here. Uh, Office for Mac has been set up. My Office apps for Windows are here, right? Um, and they're all configured the way they should be here. Okay, and if we shift to enrollment, I just kind of want to take a look at how that's configured. So automatic enrollment's been enabled, which is cool. I have uh, I have an autopilot profile that's been configured for me to test out. So if you don't know where to start with autopilot, uh, we have a pretty good policy here. It's enter joined. That's good. That's what we always say. It's suppressing the uh, admin user. We're using the serial numbers, the template, and it's automatically uh, assigned to our Intune pilot devices group, which has been created for us. I checked back uh, in the um, in the logs of the application. This took four minutes to deploy. Four minutes. Um, you know, this isn't to say this is a one-stop shop for you run this, your Intune tenant is set forever. That's not what we're talking about. But what we're saying is there is so much to cover here. And if you look at everything we went through, uh, that could take days, if not weeks, to go through, look at the recommended settings, set these up, even if you just want to test. So, you know, for me and the folks I work with, we would just want to, like, you know, get in, have some recommended settings, have some baselines, start enrolling, and then from there, we can go back and tweak. This is all editable. You can remove stuff. This is not, like, just a constant. You go in here and... Uh, 
you know, it, you're stuck with it. This is just a great, you know, catalyst to get you going. So I'm going to put the link below, right? I think it's a great tool. Um, you know, thanks to um, Andrew Taylor for letting me try it out. Very, very happy with it. And yeah, I would definitely recommend this to uh, anyone looking to get started. So let me know if you're using it uh, down below. Shout out on the Discord, all that stuff, the usual. Um, and uh, we'll be seeing you.